Graduates, our ceremony is about to begin. Please take your seat and remain seated throughout the program. The ceremony will begin in one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chancellor Kevin Guskowitz and distinguished members of the Platform Party and faculty led by Faculty Marshal Jay Icutt.
Good morning, and welcome to the 2023 hooding ceremony for doctoral candidates at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. <laughs> Leading us in the singing of the national anthem is senior Imani Oluwoch, a classical vocal performance major. Please stand. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's glass gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled I'd like to start by welcoming all of our faculty, family, and friends who are here today to celebrate alongside our incredible graduates. It's such a joy to be with you this morning and to celebrate these graduates and their hard-earned achievements. Yesterday, I was walking across campus to celebrate our veterans graduating at the Red, White, and Carolina Blue graduation ceremony. Actually, I I may have been seen tripping on my way to that event because our seniors have been upholding that beloved graduation tradition of uprooting souvenir bricks from the campus pathways. Many of you have seen it. Leaving the rest of us with souvenir potholes. Yet, even as I was grumbling uh, under my breath and dodging the gaps in the sidewalk, I understood why there's such a powerful impulse to take a little piece of this place with you. This university, this campus, is special. We want a piece of it because we want to hold on to this time in our lives, to remember what it felt like to walk these paths and live and learn in these halls. You have to be pretty jaded not to feel the magic of this place at least sometimes, as you walk home under centuries-old trees and feel the connection to all those who have come before and all who will follow after you. So I get the symbolism of the bricks, I do. But I want you to walk away from Carolina without a brick, thank you, <laughs> but with a lasting memory of another feature of this place another bit of symbolism from UNC's rich variety of campus masonry. Our whole campus is set apart by low stone walls, and I love the imagery of that. They're not the barriers of traditional ivory tower, secluded from the outside world or isolated within our disciplines. Carolina's walls are, are just knee high, with lots of openings big enough to give campus a distinct sense of place, but small enough to welcome people and ideas 
from, our outside, from outside our boundaries. At Carolina, we value collaboration. We know that the best work is often shared work, and progress happens when diverse teams of people with different backgrounds come together to tackle problems. We believe that biologists need artists, historians need data scientists, surgeons need poets, and on and on. As graduate students, you have experienced that culture among our faculty and helped share it with our students. You have built friendships with colleagues across campus, found opportunities to share your expertise and enthusiasm outside your own discipline, and appreciated all the ways Carolina benefits from its connections to the wider world. My charge to you today is to take that culture of openness and low stone barriers with you into the world. The universities, institutions, organizations, and companies that you'll be a part of in the future will share many of the values that we have here at Carolina. Values of hard work, perseverance, excellence, and service. Those values are responsible for so much of the progress that we take for granted in our world today. Yet I believe that one of the most important values that sustains the work of creativity and discovery is openness. Being a person who's curious, interested in the thoughts and ideas of others, the kind of person that other people are excited to work alongside. That's what it means to embody a culture of low stone walls. Respect and cherish the institution you're a part of, but be open to shared work, shared scholarship outside the regular boundaries. As Tar Heels, you are called to be part of a worldwide conspiracy of good people, as one of our most famous alums, Charles Kuralt, once put it. You get to join a not-so-secret society defined by a willingness to include others, not draw arbitrary lines. You will be engaged in a centuries-long plot to improve the human condition and advance our shared knowledge about the world. You will occasionally don robes and participate in elaborate ceremonies, all part of a brilliant scheme to celebrate the discovery of new ideas. As conspiracies go, this is a good one. So take that spirit of low stone walls with you and remember that we, your faculty, administrators, staff, and your fellow students will always be here, commiserating in your challenges and cheering your many successes. Congratulations. Also joining us on the stage today here to celebrate your accomplishments is a number of distinguished people. First, I'm pleased to introduce the Chair of the Board of Trustees of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, David Bullock. Chair Bullock will bring greetings from the Board of Trustees. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor and members of the platform committee. I, I am very honored and humbled to be able to say congratulations on behalf of the Board of Trustees. I'll start by saying that chat GPT did not write my remarks. <laughs> Although I did do a test run, right? Uh, let me also say to you uh, graduate students here at UNC Chapel Hill, thank you. Thank you for being part of the great research enterprise here at Carolina. Our university was just an idea more than 230 years ago. And for nearly that long, students have been coming to Chapel Hill, earning degrees, and leading in all areas of life. 
you are the latest group of graduates to experience the great experiment in public education that is Carolina. You represent the embodiment of just how far we have come and how far we can go as a top global research university. Annual research that tops the $1.2 billion mark is not possible, of course, without your great faculty mentors and leaders. So please give them a round of applause. We can't take our world-class faculty for granted. But let me also say that that $1.2 billion in annual research is not possible without you, the graduate students at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And for that, I give you a round of applause. As a graduate, you are now a part of the collective Carolina story, as Chancellor Guswitz mentioned. What you take away from this place will change over time. As a professional, you now have the tools to face changes that will be presented to you head on. Carolina is built for change, and now so are you because you were here. To be sure, this place is not perfect, but we are more equipped today to understand our past, but most importantly, to view the future with a very sharp lens. Keep in mind, you will not succeed at everything. I'm an attorney, so I know I don't, you won't win every case. You won't solve every problem, but you'll keep trying. Success, after all, is about the journey and the way you travel on that journey. My hope for you is that on your, personal on your personal journey and throughout your personal journey, that you have been inspired by this place, that you will use that inspiration to attack the impossible, make things happen, and change the world. I can say one thing for sure, we're counting on you. No pressure. Please remember these final things as you leave here, hooded and ready to tackle the great challenges of our time. First, take care of yourself. We are all learning not to be afraid to take care of our mental health. If you think you need help, please get it. You are a beloved and loved member of the Carolina family. Next, know that when you travel away from Chapel Hill, you will be surprised at the respect you get from having been here. Most of you will leave this place. Some of you will stay, but in either case, come back to campus. Even folks with a terminal degree need some downtime. So go to a football game, a basketball game, or take part in something you love here. I have no doubt, for example, that there are future trustees, vice chancellors, perhaps a provost, or even uh, a future chancellor at UNC graduating and being hooded today. After all, the campus is just a place. Our university is its people. I'll close by saying that today, standing up here in front of who I believe to be certainly some of the brightest minds of our time, I am certainly hum humbled. My perspective as an undergraduate student was starkly different from my experience graduating from law school. I suspect the feeling is similar for most of you who are here today. Your accomplishment comes with pride from family, children, others in your life, including mentors in the faculty. But most of all, I suspect for you as graduates who are getting hooded here today, this morning is personal. So, well done. Serve our state, our nation, and our world well. Congratulations again. And you know, it's a great day to be a Tar Heel. Thank you, Chair Bullock. It's now my pleasure to introduce my distinguished colleagues on the platform. I'll call their names and ask them to stand and remain standing. Chris Clemens, Provost. Amy Hertel, Executive Vice Provost and Chair of the Commencement Committee. 
Jill Moore, Professor and Secretary of the Faculty. Mimi Chapman, Professor and Chair of the Faculty. Tori Ekstrom, Royster Distinguished Professor for Graduate Education. Lauren Hawkinson, Graduate and Professional Student Government President. Registrar Lauren DeGrazia. And deans and faculty joining us today, please rise and let's give everyone a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Beth Mayer Davis, Dean of the Graduate School. Good morning. For more than a century, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill has engaged in graduate education and has prepared tens of thousands of alumni to generate new knowledge and to serve society. These esteemed alumni represent the engine of opportunity at Carolina. Our alumni are the next generation of leaders and are at the crossroads of research and impact. They become public servants, scientists, business leaders, and world-renowned experts. Through the years of near constant change and the grand challenges facing our society, they have triumphed and made our world a better place. Congratulations, doctoral graduates. There are many diverse disciplines represented in today's ceremony. The Graduate School oversees more than 80 programs and 160 advanced degrees that span the arts, humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, and a variety of professional disciplines. These graduates, along with their faculty, friends, and family, come together today to celebrate and share in pride and joy of what they've accomplished here at Carolina. Doctoral graduates, during your time here, you've enriched our university and you've advanced our mission of research, teaching, and public service. Carolina's doctoral recipients represent excellence in their disciplines, and you will carry that standard of excellence with you. It's an honor, it's truly an honor to celebrate with you today and we're counting on you to continue your work wherever life may take you. We encourage you to balance that work with all the other wonderful aspects of life, including family, community, and your own personal well-being to thrive. Soon you'll hear from our doctoral hooding speaker, a dear colleague and friend of mine for many years, Dr. Ana Maria Siegaris. And each year the hooding speaker is selected by a committee and I'm thrilled that a fellow researcher in nutrition received this year's invitation. I know you'll enjoy hearing from her as you embark on your own journey. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Lauren Hawkinson, representing the Graduate and Professional Student Government at Carolina, and she will introduce Dr. Siega Reese. Dr. Excuse me, <clears throat> Dr. Anna Maria Siega Ries is Dean and Professor in the School of Public Health and Health Sciences at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. As a Dean and faculty member, she is committed to enhancing diversity, belonging, and efforts that support the overall health and well-being of faculty, staff, and students in higher education. Dr. Siega Ries's research focuses on the first thousand days of life by understanding the influence of maternal nutrition status such as dietary patterns and food or eating behaviors for pregnancy and early childhood outcomes. Her research interests include examining the determinants and consequences of food insecurity and the implications of food policy on health outcomes. She has been involved in the National Institutes of Health funded Hispanic Community Health Study in the United States since 2007. She currently serves on the National Institutes of Health's Council of Councils National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine's Health and Medicine Division Advisory Committee, the Food and Nutrition Board, and as a board member, a board of trustee member for the International Food Information Council. 
She held the credentials of a registered dietitian for more than 30 years. Dr. Siega Reese holds a Bachelor of Science degree in public health from the UNC Gillings School of Global Public Health, a Master of Science in Food, Nutrition, and Food Service Management from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, and a PhD in Nutrition with a focus on epidemiology from the UNC Gillings School of Public Health. We are delighted. <laughs> We are delighted to have her serve as today's keynote speaker. Thank you, Lauren, for that warm introduction. And thank you, Dean Mayor Davis, for the invitation to be the speaker at today's ceremony. I'm especially grateful to Associate Dean Charletta Sims Evans, who I am told made the nomination from the Gillings School of Public Health. It's an honor and joy to be here today, almost 30 years to the date of when I participated in a similar ceremony at Keenan Stadium. Though the ceremony has evolved over the years, it shares the common theme of, in celebrating the incredible milestone of having completed one's doctoral degree. Let me begin my remarks by saying congratulations for your hard work, your tenacity, and your perseverance. Please join me in giving the doctoral students another round of applause. Graduates, this is a degree that you're never, ever going to regret obtaining. These last few years will become a blur. Trust me on that. Although, I suspect you will always remember where you were in the program when the university transitioned due to COVID. But the feeling of accomplishment you have today will last a lifetime. When I graduated, people would say to me, Welcome to the Academy. Welcome to the Academy? It sounds so profound, right? But as a first-gen student, I had no idea what that meant. Today, it means so much more to me. It means welcome to the community of innovators, to the community of compassionate change makers who want to make this world a better place. Welcome to the company of individuals who will collaborate with you and inspire and then educate the next generation of political scientists, microbiologists, sociologists, you get my point. But back then, you see, I didn't know what it meant to be in the academy. Because as an immigrant and a daughter of Cuban refugees, I had no experience with higher education to draw from. No one in my immediate family had gone to college, let alone obtained a master's or a doctoral degree. My family came to the United States shortly after Castro took over, leaving everything behind. Everything. I remember my mother telling me the stories of how she put her wedding rings inside the toothpaste tube to be able to bring it home um, to Italy. So, can you imagine having to make that sacrifice? I suspect that some of you in the audience have had families who have made similar sacrifices coming to America. We were fortunate, though, to have my relatives in Italy who could provide us with refuge for a year while my father went to New York to find a job, learn the English language, and set up a home for us. I grew up speaking Spanish as my first language, to which I attribute my difficulties with phonics and spelling to this day. And we moved multiple times, from the Queens to Morristown, New Jersey, to the Bronx, and then eventually at the age of 16 to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Why there? Because that's where my father's only Italian relative in the United States lived. And to my good fortune, they had children who attended college. And to my even greater fortune, one of them was here at UNC. Visiting my cousin on campus and seeing all that UNC had to offer provided me with sufficient rationale for applying early admission. My college years were beyond incredible. 
I was here during the Michael Jordan years and winning the national championship. They also had Spring Fest while I was here, and I remember Bonnie Ray being one of the bands that came to play. And the building of the Davis Library occurred while I was here. As an undergraduate, I found the field of public health after quickly realizing that medical school was not really my calling. I hated the smells of hospitals, and I fainted in the burn room. I realized that was a big sign. It became apparent to me that my love of good food, traveling to other countries, and sharing cultural traditions that make people feel good was compatible with the field of public health. By the time I earned my master's degree, I knew in my heart that my mission was to prevent disease, improve lives, and ensure health equity for all. My first job after my master's was in Davidson County Health Department, which encompasses Lexington and Thomasville, North Carolina. I worked as a public health nutrition, and it opened my eyes to what interventions could do to impact lives. This awakening was further cemented when I had the opportunity to live in Los Angeles and worked in a prematurity prevention project funded by the March of Dimes. I had the amazing opportunity to work with an interdisciplinary team to help low-income women have better out birth outcomes. The data that I collected became my dissertation project, and to this day, I am still working in the area of nutritional determinants of health and disease for women and children. My four years of doctoral studies was filled with a steep learning curve, a sense of belonging because the Department of Nutrition had outstanding faculty who gave me the time of day, and fun because of the meaningful relationships with peers in other departments across the school and in the cohorts above and below me, which to this day are still close friends of mine. My career has been a journey a joy, and a challenge. I've made some mistakes for sure. I've traveled to many countries and collaborated with talented researchers who have enriched my knowledge and made me humbler. I've climbed the ladder from research assistant professor to now dean of a major school of public health and health sciences. And I've had the privilege of shaping policy in the United States, as you heard, by working with the National Academy of Sciences, the Institute of Health, and the Department of Health and Human Services. I've been able to impact lives. In preparing for this speech, I recalled the lyrics of one of my favorite songwriters, James Taylor. And no, it's not Carolina on my mind. He sang a song with, with these lyrics. The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. We need to remember where we came from, where we are now, and to dream about our future. In the audience today are some of my mentors who I am so thankful for. They have helped to mold me immeasurably, and there are also a few of my former doctoral students who have joined the esteemed Academy of UNC, who I am very proud of. You see, the circle of life continues, and throughout the circle, Having mentors is critical to your success and well-being. One of my mentors told me that as a woman, I needed to have five mentors, two who were older than me, two who were younger, and one who was my age. One person is simply not enough and can't mold, model all of the facets of your career. And younger colleagues, are inspiring and keep you on your toes. I have passed this advice on to many junior faculty and doctoral students, regardless of gender, and now I pass it on to you. If you remember anything from my speech today, remember these last three points. First, reflect on the good things. See the nurturing and compassion that people have had with you during your time at UNC. Carry forward that compassion into whatever career you choose, whether it is to become an academician, to work in industry, for a government agency, or for a nonprofit. Making compassion a critical element of who you are is 
nice. And we all need a bit more compassion in our fields. Second, remember this very special place. This place that helped to mold you, that provided you with this opportunity to learn, grow, and discover. This degree provides you with the opportunity to walk through many doors. And while you might be afraid to walk through those doors, it's okay. You need to be comfortable with being afraid. A message that Michelle Obama delivers so eloquently in her book, The Light We Carry. It's okay to be afraid of making mistakes and not knowing what the answer is. Trust me, the more I have interacted with my colleagues and have come to understand over the passage of time, the more I am convinced that I know very little. Or at least that's what my kids told me during my, their teenage years, of which it was the only time I thought my PhD was worthless. <laughs> and finally, remember to give back to your alma mater. Give back in terms of time, talent, and treasure. I have enjoyed my involvement with this special institution while I was here as a professor and afterwards while serving as the on the Board of Visitors. In that capacity, I had the pleasure of speaking to pre-health undergraduate applicants who were admitted and accepted into the honors program. Seeing and hearing their enthusiasm and their sense of unlimited energy was inspiring to me. And as a dean, I know that giving back in terms of philanthropy makes a huge difference. It's what allows us to break down the financial barriers to permit students from any socioeconomic class to optimize their graduate experience. As you know, philanthropy pays for those travel to conferences, for publications, and ultimately to fund stipends. Let's face it, giving back is how we help the world forward to become a better place. The circle of life continues in this manner. Congratulations to the doctorates of 2023, and go Tar Heels. Thank you so much, Dr. Sager Rees. It's wonderful. And now I ask the first row of candidates for doctoral degrees to come forward as directed by faculty Marshall J. Acad. As we prepare to recognize our doctoral graduates, I'd like to take a moment to explain the significance of the commencement hood. The hooding ceremony is derived from medieval university traditions in the 12th and 13th centuries, when universities began to take shape, they were under jurisdiction of the church. Those studying wore a habit or cloak to which was attached a cowl or hood. The hood seems to have had three uses, as a covering, a shoulder cape, and as a bag for collecting alms. Perhaps you've heard the story, yes, <laughs> perhaps you've heard the story whether true or not, of the small cup formed by the folds of the cloth at the back of the hood being used as a receptacle for coins offered by, graduate, by grateful students after a particularly inspiring lecture by their teacher. The colors symbolize school and broad discipline, as, as explained in your digital program. The presentation of the hood by the student's mentor symbolizes the welcoming of a graduate as a full-fledged member of the community of scholars. As we begin, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the accomplishments of a former doctoral student studying under the guidance of Jennifer Ho and Heidi Kim. Caroline Porter was awarded a posthumous doctorate of philosophy in the Department of English and Comparative Literature in December 2022. Congratulations to Caroline's parents. Her mother has joined us here today. As I call the name of each doctoral candidate and his or her advisor, I ask that the student and advisor proceed onto the stage, and at this point, the advisor and Provost Clemens will ceremoniously place the hood on the student. 
The student and advisor will then proceed to the farthest end of the stage to receive congratulations from Chancellor Guskowitz and Chair Bolick. If the student's advisor is not present, Provost Clemens and our Royster Distinguished Professor for Graduate Education, Tori Ekstrand, will present the hood to the student. I want to call your attention to those students who are wearing gold cords. These students are members of the Royster Society of Fellows, the graduate school's most prestigious graduate fellowship program. There's a professional photographer at the foot of the stage who will be taking photos of each graduate. we begin. Is this on? Yeah, is that on? Okay. Eric Bontempo, English and Comparative Literature, hooded by Jean Moskal. Okay. Mary Biggs. All right, Mary Biggs, Geography, hooded by Banu Gokrisko and uh, Christian Lenz. <laughs> Lily Herbert, Geography, hooded by Paul Delamater and uh, Banu Gokorisko. <laughs> Rachel Woodall, Geography, hooded by Paul Dalamata. Tao Tao, Computer Science, hooded by Provost Clemens and Distinguished Worcester Professor Ekstrand. <laughs> Melanie Godsey, Classics hooded by Jennifer Gates Foster. <laughs> Jocelyn Burney, Religious Studies, hooded by Jennifer Gates Foster. Jay Ping Wei, Sociology, hooded by Provost Clemens and Distinguished Royster Professor Ekstrand. Monish Goal, Computer Science, hooded by Parasawa Duiglia. Alexandra Corey Hill, Musicology, hooded by Mark Katz. <laughs> Kelly Smith um, Bewer, Musicology, hooded by Mark Katz. Isa Cruz, Anthropology, hooded by Amanda Thompson. <laughs> Brett.
Brian Duggan, Anthropology, hooded by Amanda Thompson. Bushan Jane, Computer Science, hooded by Donald Porter. Aaron Davenport, Sociology, hooded by Lisa Pierce. Brianka Taylor, Sociology, hooded by Lisa Pierce. <laughs> Alexander Veach, Chemistry, hooded by Garrick Pilak. Clara Stewart, Chemistry, hooded by Garrick Pilek. <laughs> e. Day Chu, Chemistry. Hooded by Garrick Pilek. <laughs> Katie Atkin, Chemistry. Hooded by Garrick Pilek. Is there a chemistry experiment there? <laughs> All right. Miranda Elston, Art History, hooded by Tatiana String. Caroline Foley, Chemistry, hooded by Stephen Fry. Michael Willis, Toxicology, hooded by Robert Mile. Malvika Pillai, Health Informatics, hooded by Dee Wu. Diamond E. Banks Holloman, Ecology, hooded by Courtney Woods. Kristen Bedell, Education, hooded by Jeff Green. <laughs> A 
All right, Brian Cardiff, Education, hooded by Jeff Green. Akal Patel, Epidemiology, hooded by Provost Clemens and Distinguished Royster Professor Ekstrom. <laughs> Maya Yuranko, Anthropology, hooded by Florence Babb. Darius Boss, Bioinformatics and Computational Biology, hooded by Kirk Willemson. <laughs> Gabrielle Purcell, Anthropology, hooded by Margaret Scarry. Brandon Yost, Physics, hooded by Laurie McNeil. <laughs> Britta Gorman, Physics, hooded by Laurie McNeil. Kristen Swartz, Physics, hooded by Jack Ng. Chad Lloyd, Marine Sciences, hooded by Provost Clemens and Distinguished Royster Professor Ekstrand. Yumong Ren, Epidemiology, hooded by Provost Clemens and Distinguished Royster Professor Ekstrand. Deep breath. <laughs> Tiffany Eden, Health Behavior, hooded by Derek Matthews. Danielle Chappell, oh, Chapel, sorry. Pharmacology, hooded by Blossom Demania. <laughs> Wen Wen Yu, Mathematics, hooded by Provost Clemens and Distinguished Royster Professor Ekstrand. Sarah Frank, Nutrition, hooded by Lindsay Taylor. Charity Lackey, Nursing, hooded by Cheryl Giscombe.
Alasia Ledford, Nursing, hooded by Jennifer Lehman. Ryan Hegedus, Physics, hooded by Provost Clemens. <laughs> Benjamin Kaiser, Physics, hooded by Provost Clemens. and Joshua Redding, Physics, hooded by Provost Clemens. <laughs> Michaela Armstrong, Environmental Sciences and Engineering, hooded by Orlando Coronel. Mac Malone, Computer Science, hooded by J. A. Cat. <laughs> Stephanie Cleland, Environmental Sciences and Engineering, hooded by Anna Repold. Craig Gill, History, hooded by Fitza Brunich. <laughs> Kyle Cushman, Chemistry, hooded by Wei Yu. Mitchell Ma, Chemistry, hooded by Wei Yu. Daisy Gao, Statistics and Operations Research, hooded by Vladis Papiros. Younghu Kim. Statistics and Operations Research, hooded by Vladis Papiris. And Dhruv Patel, Statistics and Operations Research, Vladis Papiris. Honore Bruton, Psychology. Hooded by Todd Thiel. <laughs> Alexis League, Psychology, hooded by Todd Thiel. Matika. Nipkoli, Psychology, hooded by Todd Cheel. <laughs> Laura Jo, Biostatistics, hooded by Fei Zhao. Mary Lerner, English and Comparative Literature, hooded by Megan Machinsky. <laughs> Anna
Adam Zahara, Chemistry, hooded by Sydney Wilkerson Hill. <laughs> Tiffany Crawford, Chemistry, hooded by Gary Glish. Nathaniel Park, Chemistry, hooded by Gary Glish. <laughs> Daniel Korn, Computer Science, hooded by Stanley A. Halt and Alexander Tropsha. McKenna Wood, Physics, hooded by Nicholas Law. Henry Corbett, Physics, hooded by Nicholas Law. Kenneth Nagy, History, hooded by Lloyd Kramer. Justin Wu, History, hooded by Jamil Aden. <laughs> Bakuni, History, hooded by Jamil Aden. Roseanne Horswell, History, hooded by Sarah Shields. <laughs> Lindsay Ayling, History, hooded by Jay Smith. <laughs> Kasher Belinda, Business Administration. Hooded by Shamul Malwani. Ben Rogers, Business Administration, hooded by Jessica Christian and Michael Christian. Catherine Highsmith, American Studies, hooded by Elizabeth Engelhart. Clara Bunscoten, American Studies, hooded by Elizabeth Engelhart. Taylise Rodriguez, Chemistry, hooded by Jillian Dempsey. <laughs> Brittany Katz, Neurobiology, hooded by Yanyu Ian Shi. Caitlin Campbell, American Studies, hooded by Sharon Holland. Jada Andreda Subar, Microbiology and Immunology, hooded by Provost Clemens and Distinguished Professor Ekstrom. Eva Vachuche, Toxicology, hooded by Sean McCullough.
Emily Fennell, Pharmacology, hooded by Lee Graves. Andre Martin, Business Administration, hooded by Katrin Gallens and Tarun Kuchal. Nancy Say, <laughs> Genetics and Molecular Biology, quoted by Hei Jung Wong. <laughs> Miriam Oak, Biomedical Engineering, quoted by Scott Magnus. Jared Blighton. Biomedical Engineering, hooded by Scott Magnus. Ismael, Ismael Gomez Martinez, Cell Biology, Physiology, hooded by Scott Magnus. Yin Zhang, Biostatistics, hooded by John Pricer. <laughs> Shan Shan Hu, Oral and Craniofacial Biomedicine, hooded by Seed Phillips. Colleen McAllister, Romance Languages and Literatures, put it by Irene Go uh, Gomez Castellano. Sandra Garcia Gutierrez, Romance Languages and Literatures, put it by Irene Gomez Castellano. Tina Ouche, Nursing Practice, hooded by Tracy Vernon Platt. <laughs> Natalia Gunn, Nursing Practice, hooded by Tracy Vernon Platt. Nathaniel Wesley, Biochemistry and Biophysics, hooded by Robert McGinty. <laughs> David Lay, Biomedical Engineering, hooded by Paul Dayton. Alexia Perryman, Toxicology, hooded by Iona Jaspers. <laughs> Kevin Moje Lewis, Toxicology, hooded by Suzanne Fetton. Catherine Sliman, Mathematics, hooded by Christopher Jones. <laughs> Catherine Daftari, Mathematics, hooded by Catherine Newell. <laughs> Abigail Shelton, Pathology, hooded by C. Ryan Miller. Aaron Smithberger, Pathology, hooded by C. Ryan Miller. And Casey Skinner, Neurobiology, hooded by C. Ryan Miller.
Kristen Downs, Environmental Sciences and Engineering, hooded by Greg Chakaraklis. Michelle Mack, Microbiology and Immunology, hooded by Carrie Moody. Laura Lokobaugh, Geography, hooded by Sarah Smith. Caitlin O'Loughlin, Education, hooded by Ethan Hutt. Sichi Xiang, Statistics and Operations Research, hooded by J.S. Marin and Kai Zhang. Wei Li, Statistics and Operations Research, hooded by Vinyadek uh, Deshpande and Vidyahar Kulkarne. <laughs> Christian Gaines, Neurobiology, hooded by Lisa Tarantino. Christina Cadavero, Neurobiology, hooded by Zoe McElliott. Danielle Weber, Psychology, hooded by Daniel Beckham. Sarah Furlong, Psychology, hooded by Margaret Sheridan. <laughs> Katie Thompson. Oh, once again, Katie Thompson, Psychology, hooded by Anna Bardoncom. Raylan Loisel, Psychology, hooded by Deborah Jones. Mackenzie Woodburn, Psychology, hooded by Jessica Cohen. Nathan Jorgensen, Psychology, hooded by Eva Tetzer. <laughs> Sejo Kwan, Psychology, hooded by Eva Tetzer. Christian Strauss, Psychology, hooded by Patrick Curran. <laughs> Kirsten McLaughlin, Psychology, hooded by Kathy Proper. <laughs> Jessica Beers, Pharmaceutical Sciences, hooded by Clarissa Jackson. Belinda Rose Young, Health Behavior, hooded by Beth Morocco. <laughs> Aiden Young, Mathematics, hooded by Hans Christensen.
Jen Lin Chu, Computer Science, hooded by Mark Nethermer and Colin Raffel. Elena Cardenas, City and Regional Planning, hooded by Noreen McDonald. Kai Monast, City and Regional Planning, hooded by Noreen McDonald. Alexis Monago, Microbiology and Immunology, hooded by Nilu Gunathrilakar. Carissa Harvest, Microbiology and Immunology, hooded by Ed Miao. Lu Pong Lee, Microbiology and Immunology, hooded by Ed Miao. Thank you. Young Claire Yang, oh, excuse me, Christian Walsh, Health Behavior, hooded by Young Claire Young and Shelly Golden. Jordan Clark, Jordan Clark, Geography, hooded by Charles Conrad. <laughs> Ashlyn Siders, Microbiology and Immunology, hooded by Brian Conlon. Rachel Hartman, Psychology, hooded by Kurt Gray. Tatum Joe Link, Psychology and Neuroscience, hooded by Sarah Aljo. Kayla Goforth, Biology, hooded by Kenneth Lohman. <laughs> Mustafa Kamal Ozlop, or o Ozop, Biology, hooded by Katherine Lohman. <laughs> Julie Necker-Schirmler. Cell Biology, Physiology, hooded by Todd Cohen. Baggio Evangelista, Cell Biology and Physiology, hooded by Todd Cohen and Rick Meeker. Christian Hennison, English and Comparative Literature, hooded by Kimberly Stern. <laughs> Michael Clark, English and Comparative Literature, hooded by Kimberly Stern. <laughs> Elizabeth Shand. English and Comparative Literature, hooded by Kimberly Stern. Benjamin Murphy, English and Comparative Literature, hooded by Matthew Taylor. Eliza Tolson, Genetics and Molecular Biology, hooded by Douglas Fansteel. <laughs> 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 
Nicole Kramer, Bioinformatics and Computational Biology, hooded by Douglas Fansteel. And Eric Davis, Bioinformatics and Computational Biology, hooded by Douglas Fansteel. Michael Kelly, Bioinformatics and Computational Biology, hooded by Hector Franco. Adam Spaley, Public Policy, hooded by Jeremy Moulton. Bria Hampton Brown, Genetics and Molecular Biology, hooded by Mark Heisey and Martin Ferris. Gabriel Zief, Human Movement Science, hooded by Claudio Battenligny. Christine Callahan, Human Movement Science, hooded by Jana Register Mohalik. Kimmery Miguel, Human Movement Science, hooded by Eric Wilkstrom. Jo Jang, Human Movement Science, hooded by Eric Wil Wilkstrom. Your card. Your card. Thank you. Jacob Robert Powell, Human Movement Science, hooded by Jason Mahalik. Martin Brown, Economics, hooded by Jane Fruith. <laughs> Megan McCoy Dowdy, Economics, hooded by Clara Peter. <laughs> Yi Yao Liu, Economics, hooded by Peter Hansen. Julian Isnard, Economics, hooded by Andrew Yates and Brian McManus. Estonia Black, Economics, hooded by Peter Norman. Have your card. Jan Chihin, Economics, hooded by Ricardo Colosito. <laughs> Kawanji Zhu, Biology, hooded by uh, Maria Cervadio and Todd Vision. Dana King, Cell Biology and Physiology, hooded by Scott Rendell. <laughs> Rihanna Lee, Cell Biology and Physiology, hooded by Scott Rendell. <laughs> Amela John, Biology, hooded by Zachary Nimchuk. Stephanie Bristol, Occupational Science, hooded by Nancy Bagatelle. <laughs> K. 
Kelsey Thompson, Speech and Hearing Sciences, hooded by Karen Erickson. Hannah Cabre, Human Movement Science, hooded by Abby Smith Ryan. Yun Rang Gu, uh, Economics, hooded by Luntz Hedricks and Stan Rabinovich. Anna Parker, Biology, hooded by Kelly Hogan. Amanda Smithers, Chemistry, hooded by Marcy Waters. Rebecca Malamberwitz, Sociology, hooded by Ted Mew. Janelle Ashley Vieira, Sociology, hooded by Ted Mew. Megan Ludeman, Genetics and Molecular Biology, hooded by Dale Ramsden. Meg Ju, Genetics and Molecular Biology, hooded by Jeff Sikelski. Donna Castillo Cabrera. Cabrera. Pathology, hooded by Robert Hagen. <laughs> Abigail Newell, Sociology, hooded by Kenneth Andrews. <laughs> Caitlin Chardle, Sociology, hooded by Robert Hummer. Reed DeAngelis, Sociology, hooded by Kathleen Harris and Robert Hummer. Kristen Shu, Epidemiology, hooded by Steve Marshall. Bhavna Singhi Shuttle, Epidemiology, hooded by Rebecca Newman. Sarah McHugh, Psychology, hooded by Lori Richel. Michael Jeffries, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Christopher Shea. Shui Lee, Education, hooded by Provost Clements and Distinguished Worcester Professor Ekstrom. Duangjit Kerry Vong, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Sierra Zachary. <laughs> Jennifer Burns, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Carl Umble. Myra Serrano, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Morris Weinberger. And Mark Carana, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Morris Weinberger.
Marty Cooney, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Morris Weinberger. <laughs> Claude Alex Jacob, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Sandra Green. John Strapp, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Sandra Green. <laughs> Pooh Joan Stratha, Epidemiology, hooded by Carrie North and Kimon Devaris. Rachel Ross, Epidemiology, hooded by Jesse Edwards. Lauren Zala, Epidemiology, hooded by Jesse Edwards. Carmen Amelia Marubel, Nurabi, oh, Marable, excuse me. Neurobiology, hooded by Rebecca Fry. Jolene Rennick, Bioinformatics and Computational Biology, hooded by uh, Natalie Stanley and Jeremy Purvis. Sonia Mihilovic, Genetics and Molecular Biology, hooded by Adriana Beltran and Jeremy Purvis. <laughs> David Pope, Health Policy and Management, hooded by John Weisman. Thea Runyon, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Leah Ferrix. Uh, <laughs> Sophie Ravenblock, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Leah Ferrix. Kelsey Stricker, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Angela Stover. So Caitlin Bedell, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Stephanie Wheeler. Dylan Bruni, Mathematics, hooded by Roberto Camasso. <laughs> Kathleen Canoke, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Kristen Ryder. Danielle Buglock, Cell Biology and Physiology, hooded by Victoria Bouch. <laughs> Kira Hykus, Genetics and Molecular Biology, hooded by Bob Goldstein. Joyce Roden, Epidemiology, hooded by Andrew Olshan. <laughs> Fomi Arbokun Knutsen, Epidemiology, hooded by Andrew Olshan.
Eugene Wong, Epidemiology, hooded by Andrew Olshan and Tanya DeRosiers. Catherine LeMasters, Epidemiology, hooded by Brian Pence. <laughs> Jose Dussault, Epidemiology, hooded by Brian Pence. Come back. <laughs> Diana Zhu, Epidemiology, hooded by Brian Pence. <laughs> Carrie Cochran McLean, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Rebecca Slofkin. Lauren O, oh, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Justin Trogdon and Marissa Domino. <laughs> Tyler Malone, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Marissa Domino. Katie Biagahi, Health Policy and Management, hooded by Kristen Hassmiller Lynch. <laughs> Eric Brown, Business Administration, hooded by Jacob Sagi. Boaz Neumann, Business Administration, hooded by Jacob Sagi. And Paul Yu, Business Administration, hooded by Jacob Sagi. Spencer Andrews, Business Administration, hooded by Jacob Sagi. Sydney Tai, Epidemiology, hooded by Jennifer Lund. Christine Shu, Epidemiology, hooded by Jennifer Lund. <laughs> Emily Ducheneau, Epidemiology, hooded by Jennifer Lund. Alexandra Bukowski, Epidemiology, hooded by Jennifer Smith. <laughs> Kelsey Olson, Microbiology and Immunology, hooded by Benjamin Vincent. Erica Zeno, Epidemiology, hooded by Emily Gower. <laughs> Samantha Tolenko, Epidemiology, hooded by Emily Gower. Cherise Glodowski, Pathology, hooded by Scott Williams. <laughs> Dominic Munson, Pathology, hooded by Scott Williams.
Marquia Smith, Pathology, hooded by Katherine Hoadley. Julian Power, Health Behavior, hooded by Deborah Tate. Tony Shritai, Educational Leadership, hooded by Eric Hauk. Jack Sanford, Genetics and Molecular Biology, hooded by Yanping Zhang. Nasitha Sengotuvel. Genetics and Molecular Biology, the Bi Biological and Biomedical Sciences Program, hooded by Chad Paco. Simon Ferry, Philosophy, hooded by Ram Neta, Netta. John Joseph Porter, Philosophy, hooded by Jeffrey Say McCord. <laughs> Sarah Kopik, Philosophy, hooded by Thomas Hoffweber. <laughs> Jean-Marie Mwisa, Pathology, hooded by Wolfgang Bergmeier and Alyssa Wahlberg. Drayvon Dobson, Pathology, hooded by Alyssa Wahlberg. Emma Bauk, Pathology, hooded by Alyssa Wahlberg. Dane Emmerling, Health Behavior, hooded by Alexandra Lightfoot. Hang Zhu, Bioinformatics and Computational Biology, hooded by Leonard McMillan. <laughs> Shanae Martin, Neurobiology, hooded by Graham Deering. Wei Fong Liu, Biostatistics, hooded by Yun Li. Minji Chang, Material Sciences, hooded by Yun Li. Amanda Aces, Political Science, hooded by Timothy Ryan. Heyin Kyle Chan, Political Science, hooded by Lisbeth Hogu. Rachel Porter, Political Science, hooded by Sarah Truel. Jacob Gunderson, Political Science, hooded by Evelyn Huber. <laughs> Devin Case Ruchala, Political Science, hooded by Graham Robertson.
Su Jing Dai, Material Science, hooded by Wei Yu. And Brooks Daly, Epidemiology, hooded by Provost Clemens and Distinguished Voice to Professor Astro. Graduates, we welcome you with enthusiasm and pride into the community of scholars. Please join me in congratulating these graduates on their achievement. What a joy, such a joy. And now I'd like to acknowledge the special bond that's formed between students and faculty at the graduate level. The relationship between faculty advisor and graduate student is both professional and often personal. A big part of our students' success, and I'm sure they'd agree, is due to the faculty mentors. Faculty here at Carolina take their roles as mentors very seriously. And it's this mentoring role that makes today's ceremony so very special. Exceptional faculty mentors provide a supportive environment that brings forth the very best from the students they mentor. They encourage graduate students to establish their own record of scholarly activity. They achieve a successful record of graduate degree completion among the students they have advised. They model ethical and equitable behavior that exemplifies Carolina's scholars and is expected of Carolina graduates. And so we as a university must continue to encourage faculty mentors to be both diligent and compassionate in their mentoring. So please join me in thanking all of our faculty mentors for all they do for graduate education on campus. To honor and recognize faculty who display an exceptional level of commitment to mentoring, the Graduate School presents an annual faculty award for excellence in doctoral mentoring. The award recognizes faculty members who encourage students to establish their own record of scholarly activity or performance, provides a supportive environment that facilitates the development of best performance and talents from individual graduate students, and achieves a successful record of graduate degree completion among the students they have advised. And so this year, we're pleased to recognize two recipients, both of whom are from the College of Arts and Sciences. The first recipient is Gary Pilak from the Department of Chemistry. And so I'd now like to ask Dr. Pilak to the stage. And while he makes his way to the stage, I'll share a few words about our awardee, Dr. Pilak. He is a, a Keenan Distinguished Professor of Chemistry, and he has mentored more than 50 graduate students during his more than 30-year career here at UNC Chapel Hill. And in fact, he hooded multiple graduate students just a moment ago. One nomination for this award read, read that he created a welcoming, fun, and intellectually stimulating environment for my PhD, including the freedom to pursue new ideas. Another noted his work as an outstanding advisor who consistently provided exceptional support. Dr. Pilak, thank you for your devotion to your graduate students. And congratulations <laughs> on this award. It's a pleasure. I can't believe they pay me to do this. I know, that's right. Our second recipient is Kumi Silva in the Department of Communication. And so I'd like to ask Dr. Silva to join me on stage. And as she makes her way here, 
I'll share a few words about our second awardee. I'm just going to wait a moment for her to join me. Congratulations. In addition to her mentorship of dozens of graduate students, several people noted her commitment to building community so graduate students can succeed. She's currently the acting director of the Asian American Center and came to Carolina in 2011. One nominee wrote, Dr. Silva has been an immense support as I earn a doctoral degree by also parenting two young kids. And Dr. Silva has done everything in her power to support me. She's the epitome of a caring mentor. Dr. Silva, congratulations on this recognition. Join me in congratulating both doctors, Pilak and Silva, on receiving 2023 Faculty Award for Excellence in Doctoral Mentoring. I thank you both for your outstanding commitment to your students, to their academic and professional success. Now, a final charge from the graduate school before you go. Graduates, you have successfully completed your doctoral studies, a process that takes years of commitment, discipline, and sacrifice. And you've done that under extraordinary circumstances. I ask that you take that commitment to excellence and go out to your community, whether here in North Carolina, somewhere in the United States, or abroad, and make it a better place. Lend your passion and knowledge to your community and watch it grow and prosper. I want to mention that the university-wide commencement ceremony is tomorrow at 9 o'clock a.m. in Keenan Stadium, and you are all welcome to attend that wonderful event. Thank you. I, too, would like to offer up congratulations and thank you to Dr. Silva and Dr. Pilak for your mentorship of these uh, incredible graduate students. And uh, to our graduates, uh, congratulations and welcome to the Academy. You join, you join the ranks of incredible Tar Heels around the world who are making a difference. I love how uh, Dr. Siega Reese described the Academy just a little while ago. A community of innovators, a community of compassionate change makers who want to make this a better world, and a company of individuals who will collaborate with you and inspire and educate the next generation of future leaders. That is the group you are joining today. Welcome to this amazing group. It is now your turn to make your mark on that community. You have a responsibility to share your knowledge and experiences, to strengthen the ties that bind us in service to others. You are leaders both in academia and in communities you will now join. And people will be looking to you for guidance and wisdom. We expect great things from you and we are so proud of all that you have done and all that you will accomplish. Congratulations, Tar Heels. Now I'd ask that everyone please stand for the singing of our alma mater, and at the conclusion, please wait until the platform party exits the stage and then graduates will proceed up through the seating area to celebrate with your families and friends. Thank you and go Heels. Hark the sound of Tar Heel voices singing clear and true. Singing Carolina's praises, shouting and see you, and see you. Hail to the brightest star of all, clear her radiant 
sunshine. Carolina, a priceless gem, receive our praises thine. Cause I'm a Tar Heel born, I'm a Tar Heel bred, and when I die, I'll be a Tar Heel dead. So rah rah Carolina, Lina, rah rah Carolina, Lina, rah rah Carolina.